Okay, any guesses out there as to what I'm going to name as the most difficult weed? Especially on a centipede lawn. Uh, I don't see it too much in other warm season lawns like zoysia, but I, I have seen it in Bermuda before. But it's most common in, in uh, centipede, which is the grass type that I kind of specialize in here on this channel. But the weed, it's uh, chamber bitter. So it's a broadleaf weed. It's not a grassy weed like crabgrass. It is a broadleaf weed, and I found that it's more difficult than poa annua, uh, crabgrass, goosegrass, any of those types of weeds. And the reason, because it, the reason I find it's so difficult is because there's multiple reasons, really. It will adapt to your mowing height, so if you mow it, uh, it grows kind of uh, laterally. It doesn't. If you let it grow tall, it'll get tall, but if you mow low, in which centipede prefers, centipede, Bermuda, and zoysia prefer to be about, you know, if you have a real mower, you can go down as low as three quarters of an inch, half an inch with Bermuda. But centipede and, and Bermuda and zoysia like to be about one to one and a half inches. I've been mowing this year at one and a half inches on the centipede grass. And this thing will adapt to your mowing height. So what I mean by that is it'll stay low enough to still thrive while you're trying to cut it and kill it um, it'll stay low and just kind of go laterally and and each time you mow you won't even touch it and uh, so that's one of the biggest reasons it's most difficult and let me give you a, a visual of what this stuff looks like okay guys so here you can see some of the runners that I've got that are filling in this uh, bare spot that I've had for years and so that's good progress that I'm making but over here on the other side, we have some weed issues. And here we are with the chamber bitter. This uh, weed is, as you can see, it's kind of low growing. And it looks like a little mimosa tree. Uh, it's also known as little mimosa. But one of the things that makes it so difficult is that it'll grow low, kind of like clover and just spread and when it goes to seed you have a lot of seed pods here underneath this leaf so this leaf right here would probably develop about six to eight seeds on it so when if you mulch mow those seeds are just going to explode into your lawn and as a result you'll have chamber bitter all over the place so um, that's kind of what it looks like and it can get into bunches. This year I haven't had too big of a problem with it. I've been bag mowing the entire season. So I have noticed some weed uh, suppression with that, some definite improvements with bag mowing. And I haven't noticed any kind of discoloration or nutrient deficiencies or anything like that as a result of bag mowing. Yes, mulch mowing is beneficial because you're adding back organic matter to the lawn uh, which it can then uh, take up through the roots. You're adding back nitrogen, you're adding back some nutrients and organic matter, which is healthy for the lawn. But if you have a big weed infested lawn like I have the last five years, I'm trying to slowly but surely heal that by bag mowing. And I've noticed a great improvement this year at a lot. Just the weed problems are really substantially decreased. And, um, just to let you know, I, I did my atrazine application back in uh, May after the grass woke up, after the centipede grass woke up. And then I did another one last week. So here we are, June 21st. I did another one about June 15th. And I've researched that chamber bitter, you can prevent it with atrazine if you time your applications correctly. So there are a couple of websites that mention doing an atrazine application in April and in June uh, because June is when I've found that the majority of the chamber bitter appears and right now it's June 21st and I really only have some chamber bitter on the outskirts here that I showed you on this uh, bed line uh, the rest of the lawn in the past has been totally covered with chamber bitter I mean it's all it's almost to where it's like a chamber bitter lawn if you mulch mow and let those seeds just disperse all over the place when that, that blade, your lawnmower blade, just blasts them out all over the lawn, it grows so quickly 
and I'm hoping now that it's June 21st and I'm not seeing a whole lot of chamber bitter, that is a good sign. Now, I'm not saying I'm in the clear. It might show up this year in July. But uh, another reason it makes it chamber bitter is so difficult is, is because it's tough to find a product out there that will control it. There are a couple of over-the-counter options, but they're really high-end products that not a whole lot of people want to spend that much money to uh, get rid of the, the weed. Um, there's a product that I've yet to try, but I've heard great things about it. It's called Celsius. It is about $110 a bottle, but that bottle, it's like a powder, or it's like actually kind of uh, small granules, I think, that dissolve. But you can use that over the course of a few years. Uh, but that is an expensive route to go that not a lot of people are going to be willing to do. But I'll put a link up to it if you're interested. That is safe for centipede grass, and it's supposed to be very good for chamber bitter after it has appeared. Now, another product that is supposed to be good for chamber bitter, as far as a pre-emergent goes, that means you're, you're, uh, you're not preventing the seed from germinating. What it does is the seed germinates, but then it hits a barrier and keeps it from appearing in your lawn. So there is a chemical called isoxabin um, that really it's kind of a high-end product that you're not going to see really over the counter at like Home Depot or Lowe's, but you can get it online. But there's going to be not many people that are willing to, to spend that much money on a weed control. Uh, but it is available. I have not tried that either, but that is the chemical that a lot of websites mention when controlling chamber bitter, especially at a pre-emergence level. Um, I've only seen one product over the counter that does have isoxabin in it, but it's also got other ingredients in it like 2,4-D, which is not supposed to be very good for your centipede lawn. Um, it's called a season long weed control by BioAdvanced um, that I have tried before, but I did not notice a whole lot of uh, success with the chamber bitter that year. That, I did that about two years ago. Um, so the best course of action I've found is to just do those atrazine applications like in May and third week of June like we are here. And I've been bag mowing the entire season and I haven't noticed, as you can see, the color is still pretty good from that May 1st uh, fertilizer application. And I will be doing another fertilizer application probably in the next week or two. And uh, We've gotten a really good amount of sun and rain this year, a good combination. So that's why the lawn is looking just great. I'm really happy with it this year. It's filling in wonderfully. I still have some of these bare spots here, but they are filling in really quickly. Uh, but those are the two main reasons why chamber bitter is so difficult. It adapts to your mowing height, and it's so difficult to find a product out there that will control it. I have read a lot of labels out there on weed controls and there's so many that say it'll it'll say chamber bitter on there and then it'll have an asterisk by it and and at the bottom where the asterisk uh, note is it'll say may require multiple applications or very difficult weed to control so I, all the professionals know out there how difficult it is to eradicate from your lawn and uh, the best thing you can do, I think, right now is this the atrazine applications and then that Celsius product as a post-emergent, meaning the, the weed has already uh, grown in your lawn and, you're, and it's visible and that, that would be a good uh, post-emergent application to try and get rid of your chamber bitter. But again, with those seeds exploding out on your lawn, if you have a problem, do not mulch mow. One more product I wanted to mention that is pretty good for, for uh, chamber bitter is the Fertilone Weed-Free Zone. That is safe for uh, centipede grass, safe for pretty much all warm season grasses. Uh, I have attacked my chamber bitter in the past with that Fertilone Weed-Free Zone and it does brown it significantly and even kind of roasts it pretty good. But be careful because that chamber bitter is very resilient. It will come back, it will turn brown and you think, it's, you think it's totally gone, you know, on its way out. And then you'll get a rain, uh, you know, maybe it's like a week after you applied it, you'll get a rain and then the chamber bitter will just come back as healthy as ever. So it's, it can be very frustrating. That fertilone will require probably two applications. So 
you have to be a little bit careful with that though when you're doing multiple applications that you don't harm your centipede even though it is safe for centipede that is a lot of chemical that you're putting down but I understand that issue when you have a bunch of chamber bitter that's just taking over you want to get rid of it and so it's tough you want to you want to apply the chemical but you don't want to apply too much to harm your grass so it's kind of a give and take um, and it can be a difficult situation to be in but that fertile loam does work pretty well uh, it just might take a second application like two or three weeks after your initial application and then you should see significant uh, reduction in chamber bitter at that point all right guys that's it for this video i really appreciate you watching i enjoy making these videos for you and uh thanks for all the positive feedback you've given me uh appreciate it have a good one we'll see you next time